All right, welcome everyone to another edition of the Conversion Stories. And uh, sorry, guys, about Tuesday, first of all. Let me get my, whoopsie, dude, my, my, my little table's going ape, ape shit here. Um, sorry about Tuesday, guys. I was um, I was in the midst of changing stuff up in my room, and I got a new bed, and I did a, was a bunch of heavy lifting and uh, whatnot, and it was like a bazillion degrees here. So mm -hmm. I ended up I ended up with heat exhaustion for like a day oh. and a half. Oh. It was bad. Uh, uh, I had to reschedule Ashley for the 19th so we'll have her on on the 19th and uh but i'm feeling much better today now that i've been rehydrated and i've sort of everything in here is all set up and the last thing i set up which um i just did today was a little cool little last side table that i got for beside the bed here so i could put my arctic air chill thingy there so i'm not dying in the middle of the night from heat <laughs> so. but anyways we are back today um mikey and myself have a very special guest with us this is Alice Gretchen, oh, wait, another way. Alice Gretchen? Is that how yes. Yes, right, just like the girl's cool. first name. <laughs> okay. So uh, Alice is an actress, an author, and uh, you also have, uh, I believe, a site where you help people uh, with their deconstructions, I think. Almost. Yeah, I describe it as a resource site for people detaching from that's belief it. systems that they come to find that's harmful. It. Right, that's what it was exactly. That's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been rushing around, so I, my brain just is mush right now. But anyways, all good. Uh, first, welcome to the show, Alice. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, Mike is still playing his game for fuck's sakes. <laughs> no, everybody's here. The whole gang well, is here. Everyone's here. I love how right. just in a black void with like cool little neon swirls. What are you talking <laughs> oh. about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh -huh. all gone, what, do you, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome everybody out there in the chat. Um, so what, what I do here, Alice, is I chat with folks, or I should say we, because Mikey's my co-host. Mm -hmm. This is sort of a newer thing that we came up with a little while ago. But um, we, we chat about people's uh, you know journeys away from, as you said, their, their previous belief systems or whatever they were. And um, I kind of ask folks to, to take us on that journey. And um, tell us how you dealt with it and how you ultimately ended up on the other side and how that affected your life and your relationships and stuff like that. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, man. Um, okay. So I was born into a Christian household. Um, my parents were, at the time of my birth, heavily involved in the Foursquare Gospel Church, which has its Ooh. roots in Pentecostalism. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. What? <laughs> what? Y'all nice played four stuff. squares on Sunday. <laughs> I wish. I wish it was that cool. I that, loved that. That was the star. church. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> there was like a, a holy bouncy playground ball and it was golden. And that's how you would decide who was the pastor. <laughs> yeah, we just called it the spirit and just bounced it back and forth to each other. The holy spirit. <laughs> yeah, but no, no, it was kind of like that. Like we, we believed in passing on the Holy Spirit through the power of touch and prayer and, you know, the laying on of hands and all that. Um, and then when I was no older, ball. yeah, yeah. Just no ball. It was invisible. Uh, um, <laughs> gotta have faith. Invisible. Exactly. That's what they say. It's a faith ball. <laughs> Yes. It was a faith ball. They would bounce <laughs> on a like sidewalk chalk square. It's a whole new the sport front. we got going on here. It's, yes, it's the Super Bowl of faith ball. Yeah, faith ball. I really wish it had been that cool, but um, but my parents <laughs> didn't really stay with that denomination long. They eventually became non-denominational, which uh, oh, today yes. the media would just consider you know more fundy light or um, evangelical. Evangelical, yeah, we're uh -huh. evangelical and. Um, but the Christian media would describe us as charismatic because we were a very yeah. spirit-filled church and the Holy Spirit just kept bouncing that ball, that faith ball. So, uh, yeah, my parents got heavily involved in this revival movement called the Toronto Blessing, which like began in 94 and then Toronto kept going. Blessing? Yeah, the Toronto Blessing, also called the Laughing Revival or the Father's Blessing. It was this movement that started in Toronto, Canada and kind of spread across the globe, affecting millions of people. It's this like niche little subculture bubble that I recently <laughs> found out Justin Bieber was also associated ah. with his mom. So, yeah, it's wow. a very, very Thanks, holy Canada. Roller. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it yeah, that basically my parents' faith was completely changed by that Toronto blessing movement. And um, 
we they believe that God called them into. Oh, I just briefly saw that tetherball comment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> tetherball, <laughs> tetherball, it's Shane Billowitz, Tetherball Holy. I like church, it. By, tetherball by the handball, Holy Church. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so yeah, it, they felt like God called them to surrender all our worldly possessions and our home. So we just lived in campgrounds. We were technically homeless, but it was by choice. So we lived in campgrounds and like with random people that we'd meet. Um, who just felt like God put it on their hearts to have us live with them. And this this was mostly in like my middle school years. Um, and I was miserable. I was homeschooled my entire life until I went to community college briefly. So it was just a very insulated upbringing that was very um, equal parts migratory in that I traveled and lived all across North America, but always consistent in the fact that the churches we plugged into, as the lingo goes, were very... Um, evangelical, very, uh, but non-denominational, of course, but very uh, sp Holy Spirit driven. And right. as I got older in my teen years, had a heavy emphasis on what we would now call Christian nationalism, um, mm. as well as purity culture, uh, the evangelical oh, geez, purity yeah. culture. So yeah. you talked about that <laughs> with, with Seth just recently too, didn't you? I did, yeah, with yeah. Seth Andrews. Yeah, I know he was very, oh, very kind oh, to have me. Oh, on. is he still doing stuff on the internet, old Seth? Good I, know his I know his channel was struggling. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, struggling real bad. Yeah. <laughs> Old Seth. I remember him. I remember him well. Good man. You, you met him, dude. You met him. <laughs> yeah, Seth's great. No, I've been on I've gotten to be on his show twice. So he's he's one of the most cool. gracious people I've met. Um super cool. Yeah. Yeah. So super yeah, cool that's dude. kind of like the foundations of um of my my background my christian background and then uh should we jump to the deconversion part since that's what we're here for absolutely yeah exactly okay. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um well so, i mean i mean it's more like like a like a journey right you, you you were into all this um this stuff you know the different types of churches and whatnot uh, it's sort of like like take us on the part like where you first started like wait a minute like you started thinking to yourself something's out of place something's not right yeah. Something doesn't seem to jive with what I know to be reality or whatever. Like yeah. So my very first experience with that, I call it my first doubt. I was mm -hmm. um, seven years old, which is the age of reason in Catholicism. What? And yeah, I believe so. <laughs> um, when you're old enough to like do the confirmation and commit to the church of your own accord, off your own reasoning. But um, we weren't Catholic, but I nonetheless, I was seven years old a pastor at a church that my, my family visited a Baptist church for a brief while. Um, the pastor that day was giving a sermon about how his two-year-old daughter suffocated to death in a dry cleaning bag. And he, his sermon, he, shit. Yes, he, he tied in that tragedy with uh, the story of Job in the Bible, which oh. for anyone who doesn't know, Job is the dude that God allowed Satan to torture and like kill right. his family in order to, to prove to Satan that Job's faith was going to be solid no matter what God allowed to be thrown at him. And I just thought that story was made God sound like an absolute monster. Um, like why can't God, if he's so powerful, just prove to Satan that he's God and spare Job's family? Like it, everything about it was so fucked up. Like, and, like, what did they have to do with any of this? Like, yeah. they're just sitting there eating their bowl of cereal. And it's like, oh, yeah. And then there's going to be yeah. a plague on you because I have to teach your dad that he loves me because yep. I have a bet going. Yep. And I'm going to blame it on Satan. But really, I'm the one who made Satan. And I made Satan knowingly. So who's the bad guy? So it's <laughs> like, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I was just Joe? extremely... <laughs> <laughs> Poor Joe. I was I was just so perplexed by that story. And like I couldn't shake the image of like because I'm the oldest of five kids. And I remember like I had toddler siblings at that time. And I was trying to imagine one of them like suffocating for like in a clear yeah. dry cleaning bag. And I remember just bugging my parents about it relentlessly, being like, why didn't God do something? Like he's all powerful, right? Like, why did God right. make her die? And I remember my parents telling me, like, God doesn't make her die, sweetie. You know, like he just allows bad things to happen. And we don't get to know why it's, you know, he wanted her up in heaven with him. And I was just like, that's right. so, that's not satisfying me. Like, that's not, that's not no. it. And I remember like in my head, my takeaway, and I didn't have the vocabulary to express this, but right. um, in the, right. my takeaway internally was either like, either my parents are lying to me because it's one of those things I'm not old enough to know yet, or, or God 
is not this loving being that they think he is. So that was like the first time I was shook where I, I just felt like, I don't know if this is, I, something's not adding up here. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, of course, like indoctrination just keeps plowing its way through. So I, I still does. grew up in that. And um, it wasn't until, like I said, I, I uh, in my teen years, purity culture was heavily emphasized. And I'm not talking about like just no sex before marriage. I'm talking no praying pain. for your sp future spouse on the daily. Like I prayed for my future husband every day. I vowed to never kiss a man until my wedding day when I would kiss my husband. I never dated. I was very into the Joshua Harris, I kissed dating goodbye, courtship style of um, commitment to my unknown future spouse. And I had a purity ring, the whole the whole shebang, guys. And wait, the wait, promise. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you're, you're going too quickly. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, feel free to slow me down wait, whenever you want to like put a pin wait. in it. <laughs> A goddamn minute. <laughs> <laughs> if yep. someone told me that the the person I'm marrying is kissing me for the first, do you remember how bad your first kiss was? <laughs> and that's my life now? Yes, I do. You remember my first kiss? Tell me all about it, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> well, we met at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> but just, like, I don't know if they... I don't know if Christians really like put that together. We got a couple of virgins who don't even know how to kiss. They're supposed I mean, to make a family. This could take years for them to figure out just the mechanics of everything. Like they're, they don't know. You're supposed to learn. Uh, but like when you look at the Bible, there were arranged marriages where like the bride and groom didn't even meet until the wedding day. And like the groom wouldn't even see the bride because she's covered in a veil. That still happens. Yeah, it still day. happens. So, but like there's biblical <laughs> foundation for it. Like, so it's not really that absurd for Christians to like, I mean, just holding back a kiss until the wedding day is kind of light when you look at the marriages of the Bible. So yeah. That, Yo, she, that, can't yeah even, was... she don't even know how to kiss and I'm supposed to marry. I'm not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not marrying her. No, she sucks. She's a shitty kisser. She doesn't know what she's doing. I'm not teaching her. Yeah, that's, who knows. And I was honestly worried about that. I knew how faithful I was, but secretly I hoped that God would have me marry a reformed sinner who would like know what he was doing with in the mouth <laughs> and in the bedroom. Cause I was like, I don't know. Like I just kind of want a man who, who knows what he's doing if I'm going to marry him. So I was like a reformed sinner. That's perfect. That was like what, what I secretly hoped God would bring my way. Islam, Islam's got it all wrong when they promise like 78 virgins. There's nothing worse than 78 virgins all asking oh questions about how everything works. No, no. I don't you think they care. Life. I think they just kind of like plow through and have yeah. their way. But have you seen the but, family guy with that when he gets there and they're, they're all like Star Trek nerds on computers? Yeah, and it was Comic Con. It transported them to Comic Con. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have not seen that episode, but it sounds great. My man um, thought he was going to get all of his virgins and he got transported to a room full of Star Trek nerds and it was not what he expected. There you go. I'm there you go. It doesn't no. say hot virgins. It just says virgins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, Don't make me I, put my uniform on. The promise for me for like being in this culture and being so faithful to my future spouse and being a virgin um, was that God was going to reward my faith and my fidelity by Gosh. giving me this epic romance that he was going to like bless me with a love story beyond anything that I dreamed. And um, mm. <laughs> that was that was the promise. And like I, I worried like, oh, no, but what if God has me marry someone that like I'm not into? And all my Christian courtship books and all my youth pastors would say like, God would never do that. You know, he's going to reward <laughs> your faith because because, you know, like he wants to bless you and he designed sexual desire to find fulfillment in marriage. So, of course, God's going to give you a future spouse that you're sexually desiring of. He's totally not going to job you. He's totally not going to job you. He totally jobed me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking jobed me. No, what happened was, it was like... <laughs> By the way, I love this. Joked. This is probably the most comedic rendering of this story I've ever told. So this is great. Keep it coming. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I'm cut to, I'm 17 years old. <laughs> I've moved from Colorado to Los Angeles, California on my own because God called me to acting. And oh. I'm, I'm out here for a couple months 
And uh, I was legally emancipated as a minor because I got my, my GED because, again, I was homeschooled. So I was living in L.A. by myself, away from my family. The summer I was 17. And a guy from my youth group in Colorado, coincidentally, happened to come out here. Um, we'll call him Luke. Uh, That's what I call him in my book, which, which I wrote, which we could talk about later. But anyway. Oh, um, yeah, we will. Long story short, like Luke knew I was super faithful to my future husband. He knew that I didn't date. And one day, like out of the blue he just announces that God showed him that I am his future wife. There it is. He is my future husband that I've been waiting so patiently and faithfully for. There it and is. I felt no sexual desire for him. Like he's an amazing guy. Uh, I very much loved him as a friend, but I did not have, I was not battling a crush for him. You know, like right. I, I, uh, I just didn't feel that way for him. He felt very brotherly to me. So oh, I, friend zone from Joe, but I believed him instantly, instantly. I believed him because I, it never occurred to me, um, that he would lie about something so magnitudinous because we're cut from the same cloth. Like we went to the same church Our parents are like leaders in that environment. Like we, he knows the drill just as much as I do. And to this day, I think he was sincere. I think he interpreted his feelings for me as coming from God and therefore affirmation that we were supposed to be together. So it's easy to paint him off as like a villain in this story. It's like, oh, come on, dude. You were just like projecting your own ulterior motives here, you know, but I like, I really think. Be the good guy. <laughs> Hold, again, you're going too Not quickly. This story. We, need to, we need to slow down for a second. Okay. <laughs> Alice, Alice, this is a video call. I'm not sure if you're aware. We can all I'm see what aware. you look like. We can all see what you look like. Oh, yes. Your man, yes. your man's Luke okay. was like. I thought you meant it was a call in thing. Your, your man Luke oh, no. was over here like, you know, God told me that I'm perfect for you. <laughs> Isn't that this whole time we've been friends? That's very convenient for Luke. Now, is now if you could rate Luke, I know this is not me um, objectifying Luke, but how oh, would you rate Luke on oh, one to ten? Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm just saying this oh, is just man. for clarity. Yes, transparency, <laughs> sunlight. Just for clarity, you know he's like. Put it this way, like if I were a casting director, because I'm an actor, mm. I think in casting director's terms, when I'm trying to objectively Objective. rate someone's Objective. physical attractiveness. Yes. Yeah, yes. when I'm trying to be objective, if I was a casting yes. director, like I bring them in for the same kind of roles that maybe, um, oh man, man, who's like another actor who's like comparable? Paul I bring Giamatti. them in for certain leading man roles. No, no, <laughs> not Paul Giamatti. No, more like more like um, a slightly Ron less Pearl, better Apple. looking Joshua Jackson, like Joshua Jackson of the '90s, but slightly less better looking. Like Joshua Jackson which was one? considered more of like a heartthrob. Or okay, let's bring it up to yeah. current. Let's which, say. Which is that Dawson's Creek? That's Dawson's Creek. Yeah, but um, which I was I don't not know allowed to watch. Which one is watch. Dawson? Which one is Dawson? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was him or Pacey. I don't know. Um, anyways, no, he's Wife. like leading me. Okay, have you guys seen The Boys on Amazon? It's a great show that's yes. out right now. It's streaming. Yes. It's like superhero Absolutely. Gone bad. All right, so the lead actor, the lead actor in Amazon's Witcher. The Boys. He's like kind of nerdy looking. He's the son of Dennis Quaid and Meg Ryan. Oh, Huey. So, yes. I would say Luke yeah. was, yeah, Huey. I would say Luke was comparable to that. Like he's no, he's no Chris Hemsworth slash Thor, oh, okay. but he's like a decent looking guy. He Thor, just wasn't my type, you know. Like <laughs> you, yeah. you do, you do have that covered. Yeah. No, so like he's he was a good looking guy. He just, I just felt nothing for him. Like he just wasn't my type, you know. He like, wasn't really Ryan was. Reynolds. Like he was he an was. ugly dude. <laughs> he was no. He wasn't Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> he was Huey. No. Which is the lovable dork. He was Huey. Exactly. Yes. And, 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 and he's like my, the my kind head. of cute that could grow on you. Right. Right. He's the cute that could grow on you. It just didn't grow on Look, me. When will you accept your role as Starlight in his life? Why why are why are we referencing the boys at all? Like what, <laughs> what are we doing here? Well, I'm just, for uh, for the guy. Well, the guy. Mikey was asking me to compare the the attractiveness yeah. of Luke, and I was saying he's probably on par with Huey from The Boys in terms sure. of attractiveness. No, like attractive, not 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 maybe you know like Teen Magazine poster status of of like <laughs> Thor, but he's, but yeah, he's no like, Jonas. Attractive, just not my type. That's the point. Yeah, no Jonas. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just felt. Um, I really believed him though. 
And I felt like, so here's the thing. God never talked to me, which I know is super surprising to fans of this show, <laughs> but like God just never talked to me. It was just crickets the whole time. And so right. my whole what? life, I was used to God. I was used to like, I was used to living my life through the things that God told other people. So it made total sense to mm. me that God would tell my future husband about our marriage and not me. Plus, I thought it's the beginning of me learning to submit to my future, to my husband's authority, because as a girl, I'm just a girl. My dad's the head of my household until my husband's the head of my household. So it just made all sorts of sense. And as to like why I never heard God. And so I went along with it. And furthermore, a week later, it was not just Luke saying this, guys. Here's the real clincher. Just like purity culture teaches that your future spouse will be confirmed through the spiritual elders in your life so that we know it's no. not your own fleshly desires. That's exactly what happened for me. God told Luke's mom, who I remember oh. as being sort of revered as like a prophet in our setting. And then God had also revealed this to my dad, who, uh, who yeah, like, no so it just interest. was all this external confirmation being like, yeah, being like, okay, clearly this is God's will. And clearly I'm the one in the wrong for not knowing it, you know, or hearing it. So I just have to go along. So I, mm. this is what began my deconstruction. This is what the first tug in that sweater since I was seven to, to start the unraveling of my faith, because I'd held up my end of the bargain of purity culture. I'd been faithful. I'd never held hands with a boy. I'd never kissed a boy. I'd never, <laughs> I'd never done anything. I repented for a lustful thought. Yeah, I did, except okay. in prayer, which doesn't count. I'm just going to say that doesn't count. But yeah, I, I Everybody enjoyed I'd hands. held the hand of a male. <laughs> yeah. And like my hand would be shaking oh, all the time. Oh, because I, it's like, I, oh my I God, I'm, holding, I'm holding a guy's hand right now. <laughs> I, 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 I heard lustful thoughts except in prayer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to front. Back when I was in church, there were certain people I would like to pray next to. Just so I can hold their hand a little bit, you know. Yes. yes. I would. I would oh make sure God. I was in that certain sort of spot. That you know, for. you kind of separate out, yep. like the, you're all in the chairs, and then you kind of like make the circle around the chairs. I would make sure I angled yep. my uh, uh, descent so that I holding the right hand. Yeah. And then I got yeah, Jeremy yeah. on my yeah. other side, and it's fucking sweating like a fucking pig. It's like God, d fucking <laughs> oh, Jeremy. <laughs> Fuck you, Jeremy. Your wet hands. Damn it, Jeremy. Yeah, yeah come on, man. <laughs> well, and then there's and then pull there's out a like sham the, wow. And then there's the prayer part you get with really bad breath, where you're like forehead to forehead, like <laughs> deep in intercession. Oh no! And they just have bad breath the whole fucking time, or like spit is flying out of their mouth and flies yeah, like. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's gonna be a show. <laughs> It's just dive bomb. <laughs> yeah. Kamikaze flies. Yeah, I fly mean, they got there. Could knock a buzzard off a shit yeah, wagon. Like, right? <laughs> like a Roman Like prayer candle. proximity can really work for you or against you. <laughs> yeah. But so, if, but if you get like the hot guys, I'm all over non sweaty you. hands. <laughs> it's a it's a good prayer session. Yeah. The hot guys with the smooth hands and like the nice <laughs> voice and the good smelling cologne. Yes, we like we like praying next to those guys. <laughs> enough, um, enough about Seth Andrews, okay? I'm sick of hearing about the guy. <laughs> hey, I got good cologne too. Screw you, Mikey. I got Hugo Boss. Oh, <laughs> well, I have X body. No, I don't wear X. X body spray. <laughs> It was too good for the joke. I don't actually wear axe. I don't please dime don't store start. Romeo. Don't start the don't start the memes. I'm sorry. I take it back. <laughs> Clip it, tons of mice. Yeah. No, tons of mice. Don't do it. <laughs> I'm screwed. So yeah, that was like when I started to really question things because I was like, I just felt devastated and I felt really betrayed by God. And of course, I was scared to let myself feel devastated or betrayed because it would mean acknowledging that God did not hold up his end of the bargain. And what did it mean if God betrayed me? Like, I just couldn't let myself go there because I was worried my faith would unravel. Of course, I couldn't help it. And it did. And it unraveled. Um, long story short, my mom was the one. So Luke and I were engaged for a couple months. Um, I, I was 17. He was 20. Um, and it was Whoa. my mom. Yeah, like I was, the same wasn't even year? legal yet. And in the same year, he was three years older than me. 
So uh, my mom could tell I was really unhappy and she could tell I wasn't really feeling it. And she like pulled me aside to let me know that she had not heard from God that I was supposed to marry Luke and that I didn't have to if I didn't want to. And so like my mom had started to deconstruct around this Ooh, time. Mom. She had stopped going to church, which I thought made her a bad Christian. And I thought Satan was using her to get me off the path of God's will because my mom was telling me what my flesh wanted to hear. My flesh wanted to hear that I did not have to marry Luke, that I did God's very clear will. And so I thought like my mom not hearing from God was because she was kind of falling off the wagon. And therefore I had to be wary of her and her influence. So, um, but ultimately, you know, it was doing. my mom who gave me courage. Sorry, say that again. You broke up the first sec. Oh, oh yeah. We got a little bit of a delay here. I'll uh, be more cog cognizant of it in the future. Uh, yeah. Your mom was backsliding. She wasn't staying true to her faith. She was backsliding. Yeah. Um, she, her faith was evolving and like her faith started to deconstruct before mine, but mine ultimately took it to the nth degree where she kind of stayed in a more mystical spiritual realm. But, uh, whereas I'm a, a full on atheist uh -oh. today, but anyways, <laughs> oops. Um, what did yeah, she, what I, when you say mystical I, uh, realm, what, what, do, what, what does that mean? I think so. I think she probably would have gotten into like Christian Gnosticism. Um, she oh. she believes that there's she believes in spirits and souls. She believes that there's probably an afterlife of some sort. She just doesn't know what it looks like. <laughs> so it's just a very like mystical sort of vague, um, maybe new age, not quite new age, but like spiritual, my way. but not religious. Is that, okay. Is that, <laughs> is that is that that thing where it's just like I don't pray to God because I don't think the Christian thing is real. But I did find my keys, and that just really is like a positive vibe going right now. And I'm just like, the, like God, like the Spirit is really with me today. Is it like one of those kind of like when it's good, it's good, and I blame you know, it on that thing, and then when it's bad, I just forget to blame it on that thing. Probably not like that, but more. I mean, and her faith has evolved a lot, but like at the time that I was betrothed to Luke, her faith was more like I'm not going to church, but God is is still very real and personal to me. And now today, I think she, I don't even know if she'd use the word faith. I think she would just describe herself as like a spiritual person. Yeah. Um, she doesn't necessarily think in terms of like, oh, the car keys are here. It must have been God. You know, she would think more in terms of like, there's a reason for everything oh, well, and <laughs> we don't get to know, but there's something, there's something going on, you know, that, that maybe is beyond the yeah. physical. So I think she's pretty open-minded, but she can't help believing that there might be more, which I do think there's a genetic component to that, which we can come back to as to why some people are atheists and why some people can't help believing in something and maybe fall into a more agnostic camp. Um, there's a lot of genetic uh, evidence to support that some people just have what some call the God gene, AKA VMAT2. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah there's yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a bunch of sciencey stuff for that. Um, so yeah, that was- We've been believing we these things for- We've been, as human beings, we've been believing these things yeah. for almost our entire existence. So it's no yes. doubt that that can be genetically handed down, right? So I argue that there's an evolutionary benefit to mm -hmm. a propensity toward faith. Um, I think it helped humans bond and connect over shared stories and get through a lot of environmental changes and spread. I think there's also equally a, uh, an evolution argument to be made against faith and that like well a lot of wars and lack of survival has come as the result of spiritual mm -hmm. beliefs but ultimately mm -hmm. i think the majority of people have a capacity for spirituality and faith and believing in things that aren't provable and so i think it, we're the more the anomalies here and I, um that is changing as we progress and continue to evolve but yeah like i do I, think I that think, there's um oh, yeah go for it i think I think you're I think you're hundred percent correct and I never really thought about it this way. Um, even though I don't believe in God, I don't really like believe in the Black Panther, but I like that story. Like I don't believe in superheroes, Same. but I like that story. <laughs> and I and I like Same. I like it enough that I'll defend it in comic book arg arguments, you know what I mean? But like it's the same yes. thing. But if it's something that's tied yes. to like your 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 um your embodiment as a person 
then yeah, you're a little bit more like um, uh, closely attached to it and you kind of identify identify with it as a part of you as a person. Like I'm not from Wakanda, but I fucks with <laughs> Wakanda. <laughs> like, like I really like yeah. Wakanda. <laughs> So, yeah, like, like like you get the like the, this attachment to make believe. Yeah, which is in superheroes now, Mikey. Oh, I'm glad you didn't bring those to better because that would have been very awkward on the way home. <laughs> oh, nice sound. <laughs> Neil was lighting his cigarettes off of the sparks off of his Wolverine claws the whole way over. It was very dangerous. <laughs> Campfire. Here we go. I like it. Flint and steel. But yeah, I think there's something like, especially for all of us that like fantasy, Mm -hmm. it's fun to believe in the imaginary to some degree. And we can understand that. But I don't think any of us are taking like fantasy to the realm. I don't think it's not a belief in. It's it's an entertainment by. An inspiration from. A love of. A fondness of. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I com- I completely agree with you, Mikey. I think when we look at spiritual beliefs and religious origin stories as mythology, we can definitely find nuggets of truth and value in some of them. Um, I also think that uh, that uh, yes, Neil is lovely. Um, <laughs> I also think that uh, when we take it literally and we take these stories uh, as a personal embodiment, like as part of our identity and who we are. Um, that's where I think it, it goes just off the rails. Um, and don't get me wrong. I'm not a fan of faith and spirituality. Um, I'm not trying to defend it. There's so many awful things that are done behind oh, yes. that defense. Um, mm-hmm. and, but as we all know, but I do think that just from a scientific standpoint, I can observe the role that supernatural beliefs have played in bringing us to where we are. It doesn't mean I admire supernatural beliefs. It's just like, eh, credit where credit's due. You know, I think right. I, I don't think we need them anymore. I think we're beyond that now. We grew um, out they, of it. They've lent like to some pretty cool movies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Although, although mm-hmm. I, can't, I can't, I can't, I can't watch those kinds of movies the way I used to when I was more of a believer. Because now it's just like, mm-hmm. uh, okay, now I'm just bored. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anymore. It's like I like yeah. I like the Marvel. Yeah, stuff same. Or like, but they're still like. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it's much more inspiring yeah. mythology to me as well. But like, I still love a lot of the ar- architecture that the religion of Christianity yes. and Islam have inspired. You know, I still like oh, yeah. a lot yeah. of the, the old pretty. paintings and sculptures. Like there's definitely, there's definitely some cool stuff. It's not all bad, but I do. Think I've that, been to Israel. Uh, it's, I've it's seen a lot of it. <laughs> I lived in Israel for mm. two years. Oh, I have not been, been to Israel yet. I'd love East. to. Italy, East Europe. I've seen all the architecture and stuff like that around that stuff. It's pretty amazing, too. For sure. Well, this sounds like a perfect uh, opportunity for a road trip. Neil, pack your bags. Um, <laughs> we're getting on the road. We're taking the deconversion stories on the road. We're going to go see all the cool shit that Neil got to see and I missed. We could do it. I'm, I'm so fucking game. It's not even funny. You want to fly? First flies? Fucking let's. Why are we? Why? Uh, nice meeting you, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Have fun road tripping to Israel. <laughs> We're gonna fucking fly to Israel. Road tripping. <laughs> it's called flight. We can backpack. <laughs> we'll, fly to, we'll fly to France and then we'll backpack our way to Israel. It'll be a whole vlog. People will love no, it. No man, you don't want to go there right now. And, uh, hell, hell no. I don't already don't want to be in America. Why the hell would I want to go to the Middle East? No, sir. I got enough issues as it is. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, no, not a good time to be there right now. Um, so one thing, one thing I, I we're we're kind of past like the high school years, but like um whether it was like the school dance or like uh Brittany Jones had like um um a secular skating party. Like what what are some of the things like back in the day that you kind of like couldn't go to because of purity culture? Yeah, good question. Oh, everything. Um, <laughs> everything. <laughs> um, could not go to, uh, again, I was homeschooled, so there I couldn't even go to school. Uh, I, I couldn't go to, um, I, there are things that I couldn't watch 
Like what? I rarely got invited to any secular events because again, being homeschooled, my only peers were peers that I knew from youth group. There was a brief hot minute that my parents let me join Girl Scouts when we lived in Kansas City. And so for two months, I got to be in Girl Scouts, but it was super lame compared to Boy Scouts, which my brothers were in. And also Girl Scouts <laughs> is not quite the Christian organization that Boy Scouts is. Girl Scouts tends mm. to have a more pro-choice stance. And um, whereas Boy Scouts feels more like a Christian organization. And like my dad was yeah. the, the scout chaplain. Uh, but yeah, oh, like boy. I think... There was, there was a lot that I wasn't allowed to wear. Like I wasn't allowed to wear spaghetti straps or halter tops or two piece swimsuits for a while. Like I, there was a lot that I wasn't spaghetti? allowed to watch. I couldn't watch. Yeah, I could wear a wide strap tank top, like the kind I'm wearing now with like wider straps, but I couldn't wear oh, my ultra thin goodness. straps or tube tops or off the shoulder. Um, yeah, I couldn't show my midriff, like no short shorts. Uh, things like like that, um, but at least I was allowed to wear shorts. You know, like I knew girls who who um. Hang on. Oh goodness, sorry. I got in trouble for wearing a tube top once too. So because it was a Neil, we were at a a, a child's nursery, and I asked you specifically not to wear the tube top, but you didn't listen. You figured my legs look good today, my tummy looks good today, and you went with it anyway. But I mean. He made bails. So there's no real point of us talking about it. <laughs> no, like another thing I couldn't do, I never did Halloween. I never was allowed to trick or treat. What? So instead of Halloween, my family would, yeah, my family would go to Niwala parties, which was Halloween spelled backward. And Stop. Niwala parties were held <laughs> at the church. <laughs> yes, or they were called harvest parties, which is just lame. I, I like it. I, I like it even less than Niwala. At least Niwala was kind of creative. But um, yeah, so like I wasn't allowed to trick or treat. There was so much I wasn't allowed to do. You know, like I wasn't allowed to do anything. Holy I wasn't allowed to watch crap. Titanic. When all my peers were watching Titanic, I couldn't because there were titties in it. And I'm like, all I have to do is look in the mirror. So I don't understand what the big deal is. <laughs> yeah, like, like did the girls? The girls were no. <laughs> allowed to watch, but then the boys were not. Like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> No, I know. It's just, That's it's just insane. weird. You know, like I, there were so many things I remember, but again, because I was homeschooled, I was in community college at age 15. And I remember telling my parents, like I was going to be a missionary nurse. I was going to join YM, a uh, youth with a mission for anyone who doesn't know. I was like full on the course to be a full-time missionary nurse and uh, serve the Lord through healthcare. And I remember at 15 years old, arguing to my parents that if I'm old enough to be going to college and deciding what I'm going to do as a career for my life, shouldn't I be old enough to choose what movies I can watch? And that was when no. they decided to let me watch Titanic. So I was like, cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, I wasn't allowed to listen to secular music, one small like victory. no secular music. Um, <laughs> one small victory. Yes. So yeah, there was just a lot that I wasn't. And then but the bigger, the bigger part, though, was even after I moved to L.A. when I was 17, 18, um, I was strict on myself. Like I, by that point, was so indoctrinated that I felt like I had to be the best Christian version of myself and like be an example in Hollywood of like what of what a, what God's love looks like and be a shining light and all that. So oh, but, boy. you know, the problem was, <clears throat> you know, that arranged betrothal, I broke it off. And that's like. I, it was the scariest thing I'd ever done. And from that point on, like, I really just started questioning everything. I, I was so scared of God's punishment for disobeying his plan. Um, I would yeah. get really bad anxiety attacks and, um, I would, yeah, I, I was just shattering. And then I also started making more friends out here in LA and some of them were gay. Some of them were Jewish. Some of them were Scientologists. Yeah. And I just couldn't imagine any of them going to hell. I was like, these are good people like why how can i believe in hell and i had some really meaningful conversations with some of these friends where they never maybe feel judged or ashamed for my beliefs but they would ask curious questions like wait really like you really believe aborted babies are going to hell like they would just be so sincerely confused and i'd be like well yeah because god punishes the sins of our children to the third and fourth generation you know and it's like i would hear how i sounded and right. and it would just be like maybe this god's not so loving like what is love these people in the secular world make me feel more loved than Christians ever made me feel accepted or loved. I felt way more uh, shame in the church 
way more brokenness and sin in the church than I ever felt in the real world, like outside of the church. And so that really rattled my faith as well, because the secular people were so kind. And I was told that they were broken heathens, you know, they were so happy. And I was told that they were lost, you know, and so it just didn't add up, like everything just was not adding up. And so um, from age 17 to 21, I would say I dabbled with what I would now call progressive Christianity, which is like the sex positive, LGBTQ affirming, but still Christian. Um, right. And because I was just too scared of hell to lose my faith completely. But then um, I gave God a test. Uh, I, I started watching the documentary. Do Jesus Camp. I know, I know. There's so many warnings. But did you not like, know that that was against the rules when you did it? Oh, like, I knew. I was quaking in fear. No, I knew. But I was like, but God, if you're real, like, you know my heart. You know my heart is pure. You know this is not a test out of arrogance. You know that, like, I'm just crying from the depths of my soul. Like, I need to know. And you're going to forgive me because you'll, you things, right? So, like, I just have to know. I have to test. And, you know. Spoiler alert, he he failed. Nothing happened. And so I um what? I were you praying correctly? Yeah, it just was like that for me. Wow. And then so yeah, that was you didn't try what, a second test or something years like ago. Maybe so I've been an atheist for 15 years. Chance? Um I I did ex huh? You didn't, didn't give the guy that. a second chance to try again, maybe? All right, God, you failed the first time. Let me give you another shot yeah, here. <laughs> he has a standing invitation. God, the gods, the goddesses, the spirit guides, the astral projected, whatever beings, anything or anyone out there is welcome to make themselves known to me at any time. I've left the door open. Yeah, they, there's an open invitation. I'm not at all closed, you know, like I did the same thing. Give me a revelation, you know, prove it to me. So nothing, no, no one's come through so that far. door. So until so. that happens, <laughs> no, no, no. So yeah, that's how I deconverted. And then, you know, putting my life back together after I lost my faith was a whole other journey because um, yeah. I'm sure you guys are familiar with religious trauma syndrome. That yes. hit me fucking hard, slammed me on my ass. I was suicidal. I was having panic attacks. I wasn't eating. I wasn't showering. I wasn't sleeping. I was losing my mind and self-harming. Um, I would bang my head against like the co my concrete wall until like I would bleed because I didn't want to cut myself because again, being an actress, I didn't want the scars to be obvious if I had to like have a bikini scene yeah. or something. And right. uh, so I would self harm in other ways that, that were less visible. And um, long story short, I was in therapy for three years. My therapist at the time had never heard of religious trauma because again, this is 15 years ago. There, there weren't the support groups out there that there are today. Um, but uh, yeah, I, well, I did get better. I did get better. And once I did get through that rough patch, like life got so beautiful and so meaningful <laughs> and so, so much freer and happier. And I'm so happy to help other people through that journey now. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> um, I uh, always have links in the description box below to help people, it's like recovering from religion, the clergy project, all those kinds of things. Because a lot of people, um, yeah, they experience all kinds of things yeah. after leaving faith, and and there's often they need people to talk to, like someone that, yeah, and, and not religious psychologists or whatever. They need secular people to talk to about this sort of thing. Yes, so. <clears throat> one thing that's because like super. Yes, oh, yes, they. Go ahead. I was just gonna because you know. Oh, they they yeah some they need of them, non spiritual help. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you just need to pray more. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Um, no. And one thing that's like really critical that I think you touched on, Neil, like on accident <laughs> was just the fact that when people go for help, it's number one seen as you're, you, there's something wrong with your, like, your, your, yeah. yeah, there's something wrong with your faith. And, and we already established earlier that is part of who they identify as part of their being. So if you tell some like, like, like for someone to look at me and say, you're not being a good husband. When I know everything in my being, I'm trying to do that. And I like, I identify as a husband and like, that's, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. So if you tell me that I'm doing something like I've been doing that all wrong, religion aside, that's earth shattering. So now that you throw the hell element on top of it and the fear of hell, what the hell do you want people to do? This is like 
worst case scenario. Like this is DEFCON 5. Like this, it doesn't get any worse than this. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot yeah. of Asians kind of forget business. about that because their experience wasn't that particularly. They forget yes. that this is literally the end of the world for a lot of people. Can yeah, be. I think it's, yeah. it's easy to not be able to understand it if you haven't gone through it. And not everyone who leaves their faith will experience symptoms of religious trauma. But for a lot of people, like you, like you were just saying, Mikey, like it's, it's not just a loss of faith. It's a loss of identity. It's a loss of community. It's a loss of family. Mm -hmm. It's a loss of career. It's a loss yep. of meaning in life. Um, because when you're told from yeah. birth that the, the reason you exist, the meaning of your life is to glorify God in everything you do. And then all of a sudden, God's not real. What the fuck is your purpose in life? And what is how my are you life? supposed to know what to do without God to guide you? Exactly. What is my it's, what, what it's is devastating life? What for is <laughs> what do I do? What 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 do I do with all this? I now? still don't what know. <laughs> yeah. You do. No, I, what I, I still don't know. <laughs> you do whatever feels right for you at the time. And you see where one situation leads to the next situation. That's how I've lived my whole life ever since not being a believer. Uh, I, for, <laughs> for whatever reason, things just have always just sort of worked that way for me. That's how I ended up. I mean, hell, I, I had no idea what I was going to be doing when I was 18 to 20. You know, I, I shit, I was an I was a, a pizza driver for crying out loud. And then I ended up in the automotive industry. And then I ended up becoming a chemist. So how does all that tie together? I don't know. It just works. It's in, part in, of in, the plan, Neil. You can't know the details no, so, yet. <laughs> it's, it's not. It's, it's what it's what ended up happening for me, and it's worked out fine for me. So, I think you just have to roll with whatever yes. seems to be fitting with you at the time. Be human. I, and now I want to do voice work, mm -hmm. like voice acting for cartoons and shit, and that'll happen one of these days. I'll get that going. I'm working on it, Neil. Don't worry about it. All right. I got some. I got some stuff I need you to read. All right, I just have to write well, it. I have done. I, I have done some stuff already, but I want to do more. Right. So, have you met so me? Do you more. know how ridiculous I am with my projects? Like, I just volunteered you for like an entire campaign. Like, you're locked up now. Me, I just. Oh, I? Okay. Oh, did you? Well, then take the star off of it for crying out loud. I forgot. I usually just put the stars. I don't actually click them. <laughs> My bad. That's on me. So, uh, Alice, um, before we start talking about your your book, Wayward, um, did, what, was there any loss of your family or friends? Like, did you lose some people along hmm. the way? Like, did that sort of play into it, or was or were people fairly cool about you leaving about it? The, the faith thing. You know, I definitely consider myself one of the lucky ones because um, for, for multiple reasons. To start with, I had already left my home and my family's home uh, when I moved to Los Angeles as a teenager. I think if I'd lost my faith in Colorado, where my family was and where my youth group was, that would have yeah. been a lot harder. But because I was already in a new city making new friends, I didn't right. feel the loss of that quite as... Quite as um, difficult uh, as I think I would have had I lost my faith in my church home environment. Um, in regards to my family, uh, I didn't come out as, as a non-believer for a while. Um, and I remember when I told my mom, she kind of just thought that I was falling off the wagon and having a dark night of the soul for a little bit. Uh, but it's, it's proven to last. Um, I'm really grateful that my family did not shun me or excommunicate me. They, my parents um, very much endeavored to maintain relationships with all their kids. All of their kids, we were all atheists or agnostics. None of us stayed in ah. religion or even spirituality necessarily. So, and two of my siblings are bisexual. Um, and that I think, I think because my parents loved us so much, they loved us more than they loved their faith. And I think that that's very rare. Um, in a lot of the circles that I've come across where a lot of a lot of parents are so indoctrinated themselves that they think that they need to shun their children or distance themselves from their children because that is love to them because that's what the Bible teaches love is. So how can you blame them? Yeah. Um, even though we do sure. blame them. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think <laughs> I certainly do. Well, you can't. Uh, I'll speak for myself. I blame them. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I got very lucky. I did not have to lose my family 
the friends that I would have lost, I, I already had kind of lost just by moving away. Um, and, you know, like I, I didn't have to lose my job or anything. I was already in a very hedonistic job. Um, and there's still a couple people that I keep in touch with from my youth group days, just distantly over social media. Um, they right. haven't unfollowed me or unfriended me. And so they know what I'm up to. I'm very <laughs> open about what I'm up to. And I see them watching my stories. I know they see it. Um, you, and every now and then I'll get a message the, of like, like. Do you have the, uh, the occasional like ask an atheist day post on Facebook? And then like, they just kind of creep their way in from the shadows. Just like, but, but why would you leave? Like they always got like that last little dig. No, I've not had any of that. I've had a couple private DM messages of like, like, oh, I'm so sorry that happened to you. That's not how purity culture was supposed to be. Well, I'm glad it worked out for you. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, really? like, I, <laughs> you know, like I've gotten a few messages like that, that I know are meant in kindness um, with sympathy yeah. and compassion, but uh, uh, you know, and, and that's the way I receive it. Cause I, I do think that intentions, I'm, I'm one of those weirdos that think that intentions matter more than in Act, even though I can very much understand Ooh. the opposite argument. But for me, looking at people's intentions is what allows me to forgive them. Otherwise, I would just exactly. be bitter and angry and waiting for ju for justice, like in ways that I think would be unhealthy yeah. for me. So for me, there when I go. look at people's intention, I, that's what allows me to, to make peace within my own heart and move forward with my life without holding a grudge or staying bitter or waiting for an apology that's never going to fucking come so i'm grudges. like i see your intent was in love to the best that you know love <laughs> grudges hurt grudges, yes. the person holding it more than the person they have the grudge against anyways so mm. yeah i agree it's true. i agree and and if i look at the impact more than the intent i'm i'm personally more likely to carry a grudge and want people to make it right or at least take responsibility and i i I can't wait for that. You know, I, I want to be happy. Um, I want to mm -hmm. be free. And so, yeah, whenever I get DMs like that, I just try to look at it as like, oh man, they're just worried for my eternal soul. It's okay. This is coming from <laughs> what they know love to be. It doesn't feel like love, but I know that this is the only love they know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, that's and, and that's, and that's kind of the, the, the cost of being a good Christian, right? Is, you kind of lose all empathy for actual human beings because you have to follow the rule book that's yeah. been given to you and anything that doesn't fit into that. Sorry, but fuck you. I don't care if you're trans. 100%. I that doesn't fit. That doesn't fit into the rule book that I've been given. So you're kind of on your own. You should come into my rule book so yeah. that I can love you again. Like it's, it's a, it's a very distancing weirdo kind of thing. It's conditional mm -hmm. love and it's called conditional love. Yeah. yeah. No, it's no, it's sure. so confusing and so hurtful. Before we we come to a close here, Alice, mm, I want to hear a little, out bit, a little about bit the book. Um, try yeah, F five. Wait, say that again. Uh, try hitting F five. It'll boot you out, and you come back in, and it might be better. It's a connection issue. Oh dear, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You got. I'm sure you guys will come back in a moment. Right now, it's really patchy. <laughs> okay, look, um, look, look over here in the private chat. Oh dear, there you are. I need you to, I need you to hit this. Hit F five, two, three, fresh. I can't spell Neil. We're in trouble. There it is. F five. <laughs> yep. Oh, so I think I hear you guys out. now. Okay, I don't have F five. <laughs> What's F five oh, on a Mac? Okay. Or a laptop. Oh, oh. shit. I don't know. <laughs> well, what that's a good question. I don't know. What, <laughs> oh, what if I just back. if I refresh the browser, will that work? If I just click That'll the little good. refresh arrow at the top of the browser? Okay, one second. All right, good. She's gone. Let's talk about her. Oh, what an absolute her. bully. <laughs> she she's so she's mean. Coming to back. Me. She's coming back. Okay. Yay. There we <laughs> go. Better. Better. Yes. Yes. Sorry. It might be on my end, but either way I'm here now. <laughs> which, which browser are you using? Chrome. Chrome. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. It seems to StreamYard seems to have issues with Chrome on an Apple. So I don't know why. Oh, interesting. Yeah. 
It okay. likes Safari, I think, for for Apple things. But oh, I'll keep use, that in mind. But if you use anything other than Apple, you better have Chrome, where it's just gonna fucking shut down your whole shit, and you're just gonna fight with us yeah. the entire time. Yeah, it's so weird. But I want to hear a little bit about your book, Wayward. Mm. I want to hear what that's about, uh, like like um, um, because we 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 do have to you know bring the show to a close, but we got some some time left. So tell us a little bit about the book, uh, Wayward. And I kind of also well, actually we could bring that up in the after party, but um, I kind of also want to hear like some of your acting stuff that you've done. Sorry, you cut out again. I heard something about wayward and then acting stuff. Um, this is <laughs> wayward. This is my book. <laughs> we'll just go one oh, at a no, time. Sorry, I have this weird blur effect <laughs> going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My blur background <laughs> to hide my messy, my messy room. Yeah, I don't know if it'll work. Anyways, yeah, wayward. Yep. Um, a memoir of spiritual warfare and sexual purity. Because spiritual warfare was like another heavy part of my upbringing. Um, mm. but yeah, like that's, I, it came, it was published last year in February of 2021. Um, it took me 10 years to write off wow. and on. Uh, so it was a very cathartic therapeutic process and I'm really glad it's out. I'm in the middle of uploading the audiobook to audible. So really? soon there'll be an audiobook version that people can listen to as well. Um, hold on, hold on. I'm yeah, going to interrupt I'm, you here. I'm, I'm going to interrupt you here. It's going to take a second for the delay to yeah. kick in. And I think it just kicked in now. There it is. Um, everybody, the Amazon link for her book is in the chat right now. Um, 10 of you can buy this book right now. Do oh, it. I'm on it. I'm, I'm on it after this. And then when it hits the audible, I'm yeah, over that Thank one you. too. When, when, when your audible version is available, you need to come back on to reshill it. Cause that's when I'm <laughs> going to come on and I'm going to jump on board. And I, I want the audio version cause I'm always running around doing something. And the audio version yeah. is perfect for me. So I'm and glad that you're that's already. That's the laptop I saw Seth too, by the way. Me and the Seth man. Oh, fun! <laughs> he actually gave me some some helpful advice. We're working with the audiobook, so yeah. If there's anyone to ask you for advice for audiobooks, Seth Andrews is your man. <laughs> I'm just waiting for somebody to ask me to read one. For yeah, <laughs> um, I'll write a book for yeah, you to that's... read. <laughs> I could do that, no problem. You're not gonna want to read the pages though, brother, because I'm right. When I when I had Seth on the show, everyone was like, Oh my god, these are like two of the best voices in atheism together on one show. Atheist ASMR. Atheist yeah. SMR. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the A yes. is for in an ASMR. <laughs> it's atheist. <laughs> Shout out to Neil's Windu shirt. <laughs> oh, Windows, like Wendy's. Yeah, Windows, yeah. Bantha burgers. All right. Um, so what, what kind of stuff did you do uh, acting wise? I think we have. Connection. Um, what stuff did I do acting wise? I've done a lot of. Yeah. 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 But if I heard you correctly, you're asking what I did acting wise. Um, yeah. Acting wise, I've done a lot of teenage audience television. Um, back when ABC Family was ABC Family, before it was Freeform, I did a few different ABC Family shows, including Lincoln Heights, The Lion Game, uh, Make It or Break It. I was on a CW show called Privileged. Um, I've, movie wise, I was in Dukes of Hazard, uh, a teen <laughs> sex comedy called Sex Drive, um, a horror, a, a weird horror movie called Shrooms that a bunch of people have been watching again because I think it's on oh, like Netflix yeah. or Hulu now. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it a resurgence so, yeah, of Shrooms? I, I hope so, but I hope it's not like the trips that are in the horror movie. <laughs> I hope it's a good positive experience for people. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I haven't acted for a little while. Like I took some time off to finish my book. And then, of course, the pandemic happened, so there wasn't a whole lot of auditions. And everything's kind of done off of tape now. Um, I don't, you don't have to be in L.A. and go to real auditions anymore. You can just tape yourself auditioning from your home. So uh, I've been doing a few of those, but it's just a lot slower for a lot of reasons. Hold, hold, but I do hold, still hold act on occasionally. One, hold on one second. I'm going to let the delay kick in. Boom. She just heard me. <laughs> she left out something very critical. I'm just gonna pull oh. it up on. I'm gonna pull it up on screen here, and I'll let her tell the story. I don't want to be the guy, right? It's not my movie, right? I'm not the oh actor. 
but I think it's very <laughs> inconvenient that this was never brought up. Let me uh, drop the thing here. Can you see what this is, Neil? <gasps> Fat Albert! Uh, she was in Fat Albert, yes. and, and now I'm just, I have to IMDB to find this information out? I find that that is very disconcerting. My feelings are hurt, and I don't know why you do this, guys. <laughs> oh, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> His feelings sorry. aren't really hurt. Was... <laughs> what feeling? <laughs> <laughs> it was such a I small little left. role that I was in. I played one of the bitchy cheerleaders in the movie, uh, but it was really, <laughs> really fun to work on, I will say. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and one cheer. day I got to I have, Ke play the I got to have Keenan Thompson's trailer because he was working somewhere. So Keenan's trailer was empty oh. and I needed a trailer because they got, they fucked up with mine. So they're like, okay, we'll put her in Keenan's trailer. And it's like, I, I was I went from a honey wagon, which is a tiny little micro bunk bed style room, to Keenan Thompson's RV with a big flat screen TV Ooh. and like fresh bowls of fruit and flowers. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is the life. So Ooh, yeah, I got to be in fruit. Keenan's trailer, mm. which was really fun. Flowers? <laughs> I yeah. knew and Keenan he's super was nice too. He's one of the gracious, most funniest, nicest guys. I knew Keenan. I knew Keenan had class. He got fresh fruit and flowers in his trailer. No drugs and alcohol, just beautifulness. Well, there was that too. <laughs> <laughs> it was his secret he drawer. Had, he had the class to hide it in the drawer. Yes. yes. Like a professional. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like he's working. Like a professional. <laughs> or something. Yeah. Or, or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alice, oh. it was an absolute pleasure having you on the show today, by the way. Oh, thank you so much. No, I'm so glad this worked out. It was so much fun. You guys are a hoot. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm glad you had a good time. Uh, we, we're going to have a little bit more good time, too, as long as you can spare some more time for us. Um, us, us um, what do you call us? Peons. Yeah, that's the idiots. Oh. <laughs> idiots. <laughs> no contents. <laughs> um, um, because we, we're going to do a little bit of an after party, um, you know, so you can meet some more folks in the in the community and say hi to them. And uh, some of them might have a question they want to ask you, that sort of thing. So we're going to take a bit of a break in between. So you get to refresh the drink and uh, maybe pour something a little stronger if you want. <laughs> after dealing with us, I wouldn't blame you. But um, yeah, um, it's fair <laughs> we're going to do that. <laughs> But it was it was it was great having you on. I'm so glad um, that I was able to do this. We have to thank Lord Falconis for for setting or for making the connection to the two of us. Yes, I think it was him that yes. um, did that little. He post. did. Uh, yeah. No, I so, met Lord uh, Falconis at um, a Center for Inquiry event here in Los Angeles, and he was so gracious nice. to connect me with you. Nice. And such a sweet guy. Can yeah, I? Um, he's cool. Can, can I? Can I, I? I would like to introduce a new nickname for Lord Falconis. He doesn't know this. I'm coming up with this <laughs> on the spot, but I have been rewatching Game of Thrones while I'm doing editing work. Oh no! Can we call him the Lord of the North? Sure. <laughs> I, I see I him liking that. <laughs> the Lord yeah, of probably. the North. Yeah. I met him too at uh, at the Faithless Forum. Um, when I was doing when I was one of the panelists on the, at the Faithless Forum, and was he's great, Faithless he's great Forum guy. more fun than um, better? Um, I don't know if I'd say it was more fun. It was a different experience. Um, but uh, the the great thing about better that just happened was I got to meet a whole bunch of people that I haven't met yet that couldn't get to things like Faithless Forum or or American Atheists or whatever the stuff that I've done in the past, right? So. Um, getting to meet a bunch of more you know fans of the show and 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 other creators like i'd never met ge and caitlin i'd never met Queen, heathen queen i'd never met um dr josh or me so or well you but yeah well you and i work <laughs> together so that's kind of a wait, how's we see now? each other literally every three days for yeah, the we, last yeah. two years we've been in each other's company but meeting you in person was was for me one of the highlights of the trip so for sure oh. hanging with you so I and give uh, my homie a big old hug. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was that was awesome. And we had fun playing Pokemon Go too. That was great. Oh my god, <laughs> we're gonna be the very best that no one ever was. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. But Alice, it, 
it was, it was a pleasure meeting you and a pleasure having you on the show once again. Yeah, um, thank you so, so much. You're awesome. Thank you for, for taking the time out for, for us and uh, doing this with us. And there's going to be some more Alice coming up soon at the after party. So um, if any of you guys would like to join us for the after party, please let myself or Mikey know via the usual uh, social media outlets that you used to usually do. And uh, we'll get you a link. Uh, and until then, guys, what, what, what link is in the description box? Is that what you're trying to say? For the yes, or they can go at Mikey Famine. I was pointing at my name. Oh, oh, oh. yes. The link to the after party, if you'd like to watch, is in the description box below. Don't forget, I've got all of Alice's links as well in the uh, in the description box below. Definitely check out the what, what the, the, the what the T one. What do they call it again? Telly. Like, telly. That's a tweeny. <laughs> what am I telly. The Telly one. <laughs> <laughs> it's you really know, cool fit. the way it's laid out. I think that's just brilliant. Yeah, Telly's so. a great link in bio tool. Your yeah, favorite probably. Muppy, Telly. Telly? You loved, he was your favorite. Don't you remember Telly from Sesame Street? Uh, no. Yeah, no. because he was terrible. <laughs> he was awful. Oh, was that the brown guy? With no, the he was like purple. He was like purple... Oh. But he wasn't like Grover where he like or Elmo where he had like a defined body. He was kind of like one of those like big um, pillowcase looking Muppets. I'll pull up a picture of Telly for you. I got gotcha. you. Great. He was uh, <laughs> he was the B-string Muppet. He was the uh, nice. stand-in. Yeah, he wasn't great. He was purple with a big nose. I remember too. Oh, now I remember Telly. Uh, he was kind of after my time. Remember, dude, I'm born in 66, all right? I was born before, you know, uh, when, when did... When Electricity. Did, uh, yeah. When did uh, Sesame Street hit the air? Like 69 or something like that? Or You you say that as if I would have any way of actually knowing. <laughs> it's called Google, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I was there from the get-go for, for Sesame Street. And I also have a Lego Sesame Street set, so... so yeah. <laughs> it's got Big Bird and Oscar and Cookie Monster. No Grover, though. I was kind of pissed about that because Grover is the best one. Cute. I'm free and I am blue. Um, <laughs> Super Grover. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but thanks, guys, out there in the chat. Thanks for hanging with us for the show tonight. Um, you can hang out with us more at the after party. Link is in the description box. And also thanks to my amazing patrons. You guys the, are, are really the reason I'm able to do the show. So thank you guys for everything you do. That is tripping me out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Mikey, for everything you do for the show too, my brother. And until next time, like I always say at the end of the after, or at the end of the interviews, like the late great Christopher Hitchens once said, it's called faith because it's not knowledge. And we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Untangle